It's time now for the Bill Stern Sports Newsreel with his special guest, trumpeter Harry James, as originally broadcast September 12th, 1942. Colgate Shave Cream presents Bill Stern with the Colgate Sports Newsreel. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, is on the air. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, with stories all rare. Take his advice and you'll look nice. Your face will feel as cool as ice. With Colgate Shave, you'll be a fan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bill Stern speaking with the Colgate Sports Newsreel. Our guest tonight is the nation's number one trumpeter, Harry James. But first, today in Big League Baseball, the American League. New York beat Chicago 7-1. Washington beat St. Louis 7-6. Detroit beat Philadelphia 6-5. Boston beat Cleveland 8-6. Now the National League. Boston beat Pittsburgh 4-1. St. Louis beat Brooklyn 2-1. That's a tie in the National League for the league lead. Cincinnati beat Philadelphia 4-1, and that's all for baseball. Real 2. Portrait of a gent named Joe. It's the last of the ninth inning. The Yankee Stadium. Joe watches intently. Scores tied. Two out. Runner on third. Mighty slugger Flash Gordon coming up the bat. Crowding the plate. Digging in. Looking for that home run ball. Or is he? Uh Uh-uh. Gordon lays a beautiful drag bunt down the third baseline. Here's the runner scoring. Gordon's racing to first. He's safe by a step, and the Yankees win. And Joe smiles and relaxes. Who is Joe? Well, he's the man who signaled for that squeeze play, of course. Who signals for every play the world champion Yankees make. He's manager Joe McCarthy, champion maker of champions. And lather shavers will agree he's a great judge of champions when they hear this letter he wrote you, Bill, about Colgate Lather Shave Cream, shave cream of champions. He writes, Dear Bill... Colgate Lather Shave Cream's traveled many miles with me, and as any traveler knows, shaving on trains is a tricky proposition. But it's lots easier after Colgate Lather takes the fight out of your whiskers so they shave off smooth. Now and then, some youngster joins the Yankees who's high on this or that brand, and I've sampled them occasionally, but they just haven't got the stuff. For my money, Colgate Lather's about the best break a man can give his face. Regards, Joe McCarthy. Yes, lather shavers, Colgate Lather Shave Cream cuts through the tough film that coats each whisker right at the skin line so you can shave close without snag. Without Start tomorrow off right. Switch to the Shave Cream of Champions. Get Colgate Lather Shave Cream tonight. And remember, turn in an empty metal tube any size, any kind, when you buy. Real three. Portrait of a horse. This is the start of the horse, a circus horse. And yet it's a great sports story, too. For the lady who owned this horse was a famous circus acrobat. She had to be a great athlete to do the trick she did on her horse. But let's begin at the beginning. Twenty years ago in America, one of the most famous circuses was known as the Mighty Hague Circus. And its star attraction was a beautiful bareback rider on her horse. Each day, this lovely woman performed amazing acrobatic tricks on her trained horse. And the horse was just as famous as was its beautiful rider. All this the American public knew. But what the public didn't know was that the woman had a young son, who, though only six years old was quietly being taught by his mother to also ride her horse. The mother, the son, and the horse worked long hours together. And finally, on the opening day of the circus in 1920 in Beaumont, Texas, an amazed audience saw a little six-year-old boy do all his mother's famous tricks on his mother's horse. It was a great debut for the lad. His mother was very proud, and even her horse seemed to share the thrill, for the horse never performed more brilliantly. After the little boy had done his last trick, he ran forward to take a bow, and the ovation was terrific. Perhaps it was because it was the boy's first performance. Perhaps it was because the boy was only six. But whatever the reason, the youngster didn't look where he was going. As he ran out on the circus track to take his bow, he ran right into the path where another group of horses were making a fast exit. The thundering horses were coming at the boy with a sickening speed. Everyone in the huge circus tent saw the little lad's danger. That is, everyone but the little lad himself. His mother screamed. Then out of the confusion, a strange thing happened. His mother's horse seemed to take in the situation at a glance. There are those who say that horses are dumb animals. This one wasn't dumb. Quickly, he galloped ahead of the other horses, raced to the boy's side, firmly but gently nudged the little boy, knocking the lad down. And then this horse planted his four feet in such a way that he bridged the boy's race body. And thus, this horse stood there, protecting the lad from the other onrushing horses. And the other horses brushed up against this horse's back as they thundered past. But the little boy was safe. This horse had saved his little friend's life. The following day, a committee of the city council came to see the boy's mother. The horse that saved your son's life was your horse, isn't he, ma'am? Yes, he's my horse. Why? Because, ma'am, all Beaumont's talking about that animal today. We've decided that we'd like to keep the memory of your horse's great deed alive, even after he's dead. What do you mean? Well, we mean, ma'am, that all the people who saw the circus last night took up a collection. They turned it over to the city council. Wreck some sort of a memorial to your horse. For the most human deed any of us ever saw a horse do. I ain't much on speeches, ma'am. What I'm trying to say is, when your horse dies, 
We'd like to bury him right here in Beaumont. We Texans love fine horses. So it was not so many years later that this very circus horse was buried in Beaumont, Texas. And over the horse's grave is a simple inscription which reads, Here lies the body of a circus horse, who despite his death, shall remain a living proof that horses are not dumb animals, gratefully erected by the city of Beaumont, Texas, on March the 4th, 1924. For many years in Beaumont, on each March the 4th, many fine Texans visited the grave of this circus horse. But as the years rolled by, the visitors became fewer. Until three years ago, almost no one remembered. His was just another grave among many. But three years ago, the horse's grave again became famous. For by three years ago, the little Beaumont boy this horse had once saved had become the most famous citizen to come from Beaumont, Texas. Now, each year on the 4th of March, there's a parade in Beaumont, Texas, a parade to that horse's grave. For the little circus boy that this horse once saved has today become the nation's number one trumpeter, the leader of the nation's most popular band, and here he is in person, Harry James. Well, this is Harry James speaking, Bill, and I'd like to add an ending to that story, if you'll let me. Well, go right ahead, Harry. Well, I wonder if you know that my mother's horse is also the reason why I became a trumpet player. It's news to me, Harry. How come? Well, because that day when Mother's horse saved my life, my mother decided that circus life was a little too risky for me, and so she brought me a trumpet and made me take up music. No wonder the city of Beaumont annually honors your mother's horse. Well, now that you've become the most popular band leader in the nation, do you have much time to go in for sports? Yes, I love baseball, and so much so that last year I increased the size of my orchestra so that we could have two full baseball teams. Mm, Harry, do you get much of a chance to play baseball? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> what other sports do you like, Harry? Oh, a bit of golf, some horseback riding. Horseback riding? I hope no more circus tricks. No, Bill. But I would like to say something that I've never had a chance to say before. Everyone thinks of me as a trumpet player. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard the debt of gratitude that I owe to a horse. And but for that horse, I'd not be a musician today. But for that horse, I'd not even be alive today. So the next time you think of a horse as a dumb animal, just remember this story. Well, thank you so much. Good luck and good night, Harry James. Good night, Bill. Let's pause for a moment. We'll return to the Bill Stern Sports Newsreel right after these messages. Hey, MediaBay.com. And now let's return to the Bill Stern Sports Newsreel with special guest Harry James. Reel four, profile of a tennis match. This is a love story. One of the most beautiful ever told, and it all began at a tennis tournament held on the French Riviera in 1934. It was the annual French Midwinter Tennis Tournament. Most of the players entered under assumed names, for these were mainly society people who had little use for publicity. Playing as a mixed doubles team were a handsome Englishman and a beautiful European girl. Each had entered under an assumed name. Each was trying to avoid publicity. They reached the semifinal round before they were finally beaten, but not before they'd been together for ten days and not before they'd fallen in love. The last night of the tennis tournament found these two together as usual. She of vision and loveliness. He very much in love. I say, say, we've had enough dancing. May I talk to you for a moment? Of course. Why have you been looking so miserable all night long? I'll tell you why. Ten days ago, I came here to enter the tennis tournament. I suppose you did, too. Well, anyhow, we drew each other for partners. At first, I thought it was fun, but then... Well, as I got to know you better, I... Well, you must have guessed. I fell in love with you. Yes, I know it was stupid, but I did. Why do you say it was stupid? Because, like most everyone else here, I'm playing tennis under an assumed name. You see, I can't just go around falling in love with anyone because I I'm the son of the king and queen of England I'm Prince George someday I shall be the Duke of Kent I must marry someone of royal blood what are you laughing at is it a joke that I tell you I love you that we can never marry oh no no I'm laughing dearest because the joke is on me Oh, I've been so horribly in love with you. But I, too, thought we could never marry because I, I too, must marry someone of royal blood. My father, too, is a king, and like you, I was here under an assumed name. You see, I'm really the Princess Marina of Greece. Princess Marina? Yes. Oh, I should like to remember this moment forever and ever. 
Oh, this night is beautiful. The music's beautiful. What is that they're playing? Something new by Noel Coward. It's my favorite piece. It's called I'll See You Again. I think it's lovely. Now it's our favorite piece. I shall remember this night always when I hear it. And so, the son of the King of England was married to the daughter of the King of Greece. In the years that followed, they had three children. He became the Duke of Kent. And as the storybooks always end each love story, they lived happily ever after. That is, they lived happily ever after until two weeks ago when he was killed. Killed in an airplane crash while flying for the RAF. When the Duke of Kent died, he left behind him a letter. A letter addressed to his wife. A letter which has never been made public, but which we read publicly for the first time tonight by special permission of the official British Ministry of Information. And the letter read, Darling, when you receive this letter, I will be dead left instructions that only if I am killed in the service of my country is this letter ever to be delivered to you. When our children become old enough, tell them that when the war came, their father fought for a cause that he believed right and died like an Englishman. You and I have lived happy years together. I'll always remember the first day I met you. We were partners in a tennis match, and that night we heard a melody that became our favorite. I recall it to you now because its title expresses so clearly the thought that's in my heart. For I know that even though I'm dead, somewhere, somehow, I'll see you again. Thanks to the official British Ministry of Information for special permission to read this letter to America tonight. Real Five, Don Hancock. What's doing tomorrow? Are you going to the doubleheader or out to the golf matches? Well, whichever you prefer, it's a cinch you want to see some championship play. And likewise with shave creams, because no matter which type of shave cream he prefers, every man wants a championship shave. And that's why brushless shavers are switching to Colgate Brushless, the brushless shave cream of champions. One no-brush cream made especially for men with dry, sensitive skins. You see, Colgate Brushless Shave Cream doesn't dry out, stays moist and active clear through your shave. And you can forget about taut, irritated skin because Colgate Brushless Shave Cream lets you shave close as you like, yet leaves your face feeling comfortably cool and pliant. So for championship no-brush shaves every day, switch to Colgate Brushless, the brushless shave cream of champions. Get Colgate Brushless Shave Cream from your druggist tonight. And now back to Bill Stern. Real Six, our Colgate Candid Camera catches the story behind the story. Exclusive, New York City. In case of an air raid, Madison Square Garden will immediately be turned into a hospital. Exclusive, the baseball big shots don't dare deny this. There will be no minor league baseball next year if the war is still on. Hollywood, California. Babe Ruth will not play himself in a picture, the life of Babe Ruth. Hollywood says, quote, he is not the type, unquote. And that's the 3-0 mark for tonight. Next week, we'll be back same time, same stations with another Colgate Sports Newsreel. And until then, I'll be seeing you on the screen in the newsreel at your favorite Lowe's or Associated Theaters. Now, this is Bill Stern wishing you all a good, good night. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, is on his way. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, had lots to say. He told you, tell all your heroes the inside dope he really knows. So listen in next Saturday. C-O-L-G-A-T-E.